This week, we're gonna start on the front. And the first thing we have to do is mount up that Texas Speed LS and that Monster 6L80. So I've unhooked, I believe, everything. We're gonna be sure in a minute. And we're gonna drop the motor out. We're gonna drop it down onto the cart, undo the last couple subframe bolts and transfer case, like uh, transmission mount bolts. And then hopefully pick it back up without dragging the motor with it. Um, these actually come out very easily. So I'm gonna get close and then reposition my cart, make sure we're in uh, a good place. Make sure I can get to the bolts I need to with the cart there too. So I've done that before. No touching down rear suspension. Nice. Okay. So front subframe is a Torx. I've already got these out. Or the, the other two. This is the last one on each side. Of course. Of course there's more coolant. Oh, why wouldn't there be more coolant? I even did the block drain. Because there's more yeah. coolant. <laughs> Yeah, if you're actually pulling a motor and you don't want coolant like dumped in your shoe every time you move it, find the block drain. There's always one somewhere. These V8s, it's the passenger side on the side, like a little above the starter. There's a drain plug there. Hopefully everything's unhooked. We're gonna go slow just to be sure, but uh, should just lift off. And it's already stuck. It's these pins on the front subframe here. I did get that bolt out, right? Oh yeah. Hmm. This one? This one's good. See, this, this is a little alignment doll. This guy's less stuck. There. That's better. Steering shaft, huh? Guarantee it. Sure is. I took the bolt out, but the splines are always a little sticky. Hey, more coolant. Watch your shoe. Yeah. <laughs> always right in the shoe, every time. Ew. So it's not my preferred method, but since the steering shaft was stuck on the rack and I knew I wasn't gonna use either of those parts, I just ended up cutting it to get it out. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. How are we doing on everything else? This is going to flop. Ugh. What are you? What are you doing? Oh, evap, undone, and shift cable, as long as that's not jammed. Yeah, we're free. We're free? All right, so before we mount the engine, we have to prep a bunch of things in the engine bay to make sure it's gonna fit and to give us space for all the brackets I've already designed. Uh, this whole shock tower assembly isn't gonna work with the new suspension. So that's gonna go in order to fit all the plates I designed so then we can find the engine mount locations. So it's kind of a bunch of 
bouncing around. Um, I've already trimmed part of the tunnel here. And then this side, I've cut out the whole tower, like we're, we're dealing with, because these are all the plates I've already had laser cut. So I have engine mount tabs that key in, so I know exactly where I want it. But as you can see, where the tower used to come down is in the way of fitting up all this stuff. So I kind of have to go through the process of prepping all this, tacking some of this in to locate my engine mount tabs. So then we can start test fitting the engine in its known location where it's gonna work. And then uh, we need to make sure we have space for the transfer case. So that's what we're gonna start working on. You'll notice I'm cutting a big hole here, and that's gonna be for the steering box. We're not fitting that up yet, but it's a lot easier to cut this hole when I have the plates you know, able to be removed. If I were to tack them on, it's a lot harder to get in these little areas. So I'm trimming that now, but we're gonna go over the steering later. Another upgrade we're doing along with the rest of the driveline is the transfer case. So this is a Ford NP205. It's kind of a late 70s, gear-driven, very rugged transfer case. The only issue is the low range is kind of shitty. It's only two to one in low range. So what we're gonna do is bolt a MP203 low range box in front of it with a doubler kit from Off-Road Design. So then we'll have the two to one low range from this and the two to one low range from this. So we'll have two to one and then four to one options. Um, also, while this is a part, I'm gonna do a twin stick modification. So that way I can independently operate front and rear outputs. So I could put it in just front wheel drive, which is good for front digs and swinging the nose around if you're in tight quarters. Um, I can do it just rear wheel drive or both. So I'm gonna take both of these apart because as you can see, they're pretty gooey. They're both kind of old cast iron gear driven cases. So you can't get them anymore. So you have to clean up some junkyard ones. So I'm gonna reseal these, take everything apart, check all the bearings over and then put them back together, hopefully a lot prettier. Just to give you guys a scale of the beefiness we're gonna be working with here, this is that 203 range box. I've got it all cleaned up and painted. Uh, this is the low range output gear and this is the BMW ring gear that came out of it. So we're uh, stepping things up pretty substantially. All right, so I have this driver's side frame rail mostly mocked up. As you can see, I made plates to box in, you know, each side and then the top. Um, there's a couple plates on the bottom too, but I'm gonna get to those a little later. The reason I started with this is because my engine mounts key into the little locating tabs here. And I want to make sure the engine is where I meant it to be. Because uh, everything's super close, like the steering box is like right up against where the power steering pump is. And just, the tolerances are pretty uh, tight on this thing. So this is all tacked in for good. I kind of spent some time notching this in to make sure it fit because it kind of was part of locating everything. And then uh, I threw the shock mount in for good measure because I wanted to see it. So this is pretty much wrapped up. I'm gonna do a couple little things and then I have to do the same thing over here, which is cutting this whole tower out, um, which honestly comes off relatively easy. It's just a bunch of spot welds and then a couple spot welds in here. So uh, yeah, a bunch of the same. All right, as you can see, the engine is in its final resting place here. So I have the motor mounts done. Uh, those are already pre-designed. I just wanted to weld the bushing in the correct spot once I had everything clear and made sure it was in it. You know, that was my last degree of freedom if I had to move anything. So, you know, I braced all these, put the motor mount tabs on, threw the sleeves in, threw the engine in, kind of mocked it up, made sure I was clear everywhere I needed to be, and then uh, welded those in, because that's, I could change the angle of the engine still. So we can go underneath. I'll show you the floor I had to modify, which I haven't finished yet. 
but I can show you where I cut and smashed a bunch. And then uh, go over some of the constraints here. As right, so a while it doesn't matter just yet, I am trying to keep in mind a bunch of the stuff we're gonna have to, you know, attach to the engine, like exhaust. And there's really no space, which is the trouble. So I have this cheap header. I had a set of them that came with an engine forever ago. They've been sitting in my basement. So I threw this in just to get an idea of what we're working with. It fits pretty close. I might be able to trim the firewall and rework that collector to get a little space. But you gotta keep in mind, there's an upper control arm that's gonna live right through here and a lower control arm over there. And it's gonna get real, real tight real fast. So we have to deal with the same issue on this side, but with a steering shaft and then a drive shaft and then a, a, the differentials on this side of the axle. So uh, everything wants to be in the same place. So I'm just trying to make sure I mock it up with all the stuff in mind. So I know things are clear. That's why I threw the steering box in. I know it's clear. It's very tight to where the fitting on the pump's gonna be. Then a steering u joint's gonna be here, steering shaft back up to the, the column. So there's gonna be a big diagonal guy going across here. And then a header has to sneak down and around somehow. All right, so the next thing to do is to make the transmission cross member. So we have this nice beefy bracket here uh, in between the two transfer cases. And we have this mount here. That's the stock transmission mount. I would like to tie into both. This one's obviously a lot more important. Uh, in this scenario, I want this mount to take all of the twisting load from the drive shafts in the drivetrain. I don't want it to be up front from the motor mounts, which is traditionally how you do like, you know, a stock BMW E36 or something. The trans mount tabs are really close together and they're not very strong. So you want the motor mount to be resisting the drive shaft twisting force. But because of the low range and everything here, and because this tail housing is known to be kind of a weak link, I wanna make sure this is the rugged part. So um, I just ordered some bushings, very similar to what I did up front, some leaf spring bushings I can throw in some tube. But before I do that, I need to figure out where a cross member is gonna fit. Because this was a big question in my data, I wasn't sure exactly what was gonna happen. So we had the ability to clock this transfer case because these holes up here were not drilled. So it fit, I could spin it around, try to get it as tight up to the floor as I could. I hammered a bunch, I cut this cross member out. This is about all we can get out of it. So I drilled the holes, locked it down. This is where it's gonna be. Now to make the cross member, I'm trying to keep a few things in mind to make my life easier later. For example, exhaust. I don't have anywhere for it to go. So I can really make it difficult if I put the cross member in the wrong spot. Um, which means we're gonna have to jump around a little bit. So I wanna test fit the link mount for the front suspension here. So I know where those pickup points are gonna be, what my constraints are there, and then see if I can get a nice tucked location for the exhaust to come through and make sure I leave that space available when I make this cross member. All right, so this battleship looking apparatus here is the link mount assembly. So this is, you know, the passenger side has both the upper and lower being a three link. These are both tied together and I made sure everything keyed together nicely. And this is one of the things I welded together while we were still doing phase one. So everything should fit up in the body. We can go over some of the geometry when we're dealing with the front suspension, but for now I need to account for this space when I think of everything else trying to make the cross member stuff. So we're gonna chest fit this in the car, hopefully tack it up today, and then uh, probably do the same on the other side. All right, so we have the link mount assembly kind of mocked up here. I've done this a couple times and I had to trim a couple little corners where like there was a ton of seam sealer. So I added extra material in the model to make sure I can make it fit nice. Um, so we're pretty close. I'm gonna massage a couple more things and then I need to prep all the surrounding areas. So if I get carried away and tack it in, it'll be easy to weld because I've already prepped it. Versus if I tack it in right now, Everything's dirty and awful, and I'm gonna just make it harder on myself. So, this is roughly what we're dealing with, which leaves, you know, this is the upper link, which is gonna go to the, the high mount on the uh, diff, which is gonna, at full bump, be up here somewhere. So it's gonna be a bar going through. I have to notch this guy. And then the lower link is this bolt here that's holding it up right now. 
And that tube's gonna come through to the axle here. And I'm gonna have to cut some of this as well. So you can see why I have two big bars going through right here, which is the exhaust we're looking at. So any little bit of space I can leave myself by massaging some of this firewall stuff or finagling some stuff around now is gonna really help me later, I hope. All right, so I'm working on making the transmission and transfer case cross member. Um, I, want, I left this as one of the things I didn't design ahead of time because I wanted to give myself some options as far as clocking the transfer case and where, you know, I, I wasn't sure how far up I can knock the floor in to make sure the transfer case tucked up as high as I can get it. I want to keep the belly clearance as good as I can, so I'm trying to keep everything tucked up. Um, but it's a big transfer case, so it has to hang down a little. Um, I tried to leave myself some space here for exhaust. I actually meant to leave myself a little more space and kind of frig up and spaced out when I bent this tube, but it'll be fine. And otherwise I'm just plating in these little frame rails. This will kind of give some structure into the body. Um, in this case, the transfer case is really gonna resist the drive shaft torque in this. So I'm trying to make this pretty rugged. This is a big chunk of 120 wall inch and three quarter. And then I have that tied into the giant plate here. So uh, I just have to sneak up on it. It's a little tight. This side isn't welded, so it's kind of wedged up in there. Um, it fits nice. I just don't want to preload this bushing because it'll make it hard to put a bolt in later. So I'm gonna just kind of finesse this a little bit till it fits just right. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can zap it together and then we'll have the mounting figured out. All right, so with the transmission brace all wrapped up, that pretty much finishes up all of the drivetrain mounting. Next up, we're gonna dive into the front axle and suspension. So we've got some giant Bilstein shocks. We're gonna go over the Super Duty front axle and all the geometry, and that's gonna be the next episode. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and you can follow me at Mike the Day. Mm -hmm.